The automotive industry is being disrupted by data and computing. New types of vehicles, self-driving vehicles, shared vehicles with autonomy are all causing these disruptions on how we purchase transportation and own uh, the transportation vehicles as well. Well, we want to maybe get a, a dive into some of the data that's available in automobiles. Um, may, you may not know, but there's an OBD2 connection in most vehicles. And so we're going to connect to the, the automobile computer and be able to see some of the sensors that are available and do some analysis on those sensors as well. So there are a couple cell phone apps that you can use and some hardware that's readily available. So we'll try out two of these in this next um, video and then show some of the analysis on how to use that data that we've collected. I have these two OBD2 connectors. Okay, one is an ELM327 and it has a standard pins as well as the OBD Link MX Plus. Now that we have some data, let's go in and investigate that data, see if we can answer a few questions um, with that data. Uh, in particular, we have this first one. We want to determine the light off time of the catalytic converter. Uh, we have another one here. Visualize the speed and elevation on a map. And then a third one that we're going to go through is find the maximum fuel economy versus the speed. So you can ask additional questions with this data, but we're just going to show some examples of using this to answer some of these basic questions or view the data in a way that helps us be able to make informed decisions about the vehicle. So I have some sample data here that uh, we can use for this. Uh, there's an automotive warm-up for about 30 minutes, 62 columns with this, this Ford Focus. We have Provo to St. George and back. That's about eight hours. Provo to Salt Lake City and back. That's about two hours. And then Des Moines to Pella, Iowa. That's about one hour with a different vehicle. 2021 Chrysler. So one of the things that you could do with this exercise is take this data set that we haven't really analyzed, but it's available to you and be able to try to replicate some of these other studies that we're doing with these data sets. Uh, or you can get your own module and be able to collect your own data from a vehicle and see if you can run through some of these as well. So let's just go ahead and import uh, the first one and just view the data and see what it looks like. Okay, so we're going to need pandas, numpy, matplotlib. Those are the only three packages that we'll need and uh, import those. Okay, we'll collect the data and let's go ahead and just import that. Here it is from this URL. If you come here and just open it up, you can see what the raw data file looks like. You can see you have some headers and then a lot of data with um, you know kind of sparse data throughout. The way that this collects is it actually, uh, when there's a new piece of data available, it just creates a new row. It isn't necessarily synchronized. So we'll have to just take care of that with, um, first of all, set the time index. That'll be our uh, index as we go down. And then we'll want to print the data columns. So let's go ahead and just run through this first and see, you know, what's available. So we can see there's just 22 of these columns. And uh, let's go ahead and fill in some of the uh, data. We saw a lot of missing data there. So I'll go ahead and just fill in. Um, this is going to be a, a forward fill. So it'll take, uh, you know, what the value is and fill it uh, forward so that until the value changes, it won't just be not a number. Okay, and then we'll also do a backward fill as well, just for those beginning ones where we didn't have a value to fill forward. And then let's do some other things like um, here's an unnamed column right here. So we're going to remove this last column with no column heading. Uh, the other thing, we want to re remove certain columns that we're not really interested in. Um, so we're kind of cleaning up the data, reducing um, it a bit. Okay, so 
I'm just going to look through my different data columns and I'm going to look for average or total. So I don't want to necessarily have um, you know anything with a total in it, like you know total distance traveled or average. Um, so I'm just going to get rid of those. Okay. So or if there's a dollar sign in it. So I don't necessarily know the fuel price. I didn't put that in the app. So I'm going to get rid of that. Also the milliamp. I just want to get rid of uh, the milliamp. Um, okay. So for example, this one, I didn't need that one either. So you can go through and clean up some of these and delete those columns. And then let's look at the final data. Okay, so it removes some of these that I had um, listed here. All right, so here is my data head. Okay, you can see some of these repeat until it gets to a point where the new value existed and then you uh, use that one instead. All right, so let's go ahead and plot the sample data with pandas. And we'll just do data.plot and we'll show that plot. So this will show us. Um, you know, in subplots, so it won't combine them onto one. And you'll see the different values. This one, it's kind of hard to get your head around what's happening here, but you could see, for example, two gallons of gasoline used. Um, and you could see some others as well, kind of the range of the throttle position from about 10% up to about 70, 60, 70%. You can see the acceleration in Gs. And also the vehicle speed, about up to 80 miles per hour down to stop. All right, so let's go ahead and create a box plot of some of the selected measurements. And here we can see the range of, for example, throttle position, RPM, vehicle acceleration, vehicle speed. Parity plot helps us show the relationship between variables. Okay, this one takes just a little bit longer. Okay, but you can see some of them like uh, throttle position versus vehicle acceleration. Okay, that should be a positive slope. Okay, you also have others like throttle position and RPM. And so you can see um, some general trends here. Again, this one's more qualitative um, versus quantitative. We're going to get into some of the quantitative um, studies later and using this data. Okay, let's create a heat map as well. This shows us uh, just for some of these select columns that we've selected here, it shows us uh, how they're related, either positive or negative. So this is like looking at these plots, you know, does this have a positive correlation or a negative correlation between the two? And so you can see this with this heat map. Um, you know, these all have positive correlations between them. Let's look at pandas profiling as well. This is a good way to just explore data. Okay, we're going to try to create a widget. If we can't do that, we're going to load it in as an iframe. And then we'll also save it as an HTML file. So this one can take a little bit of time, especially if your data set is large. Uh, it can run uh, for a while. So sometimes you want to set minimal equals true. So it just creates a minimal report and skips some of them that take a long time to generate. Okay, but it's going to run through this. It'll give you an estimate of how long it takes uh, to generate. But in general, just for large data sets, anything over 10,000 data points, it's going to take um, you know 30 seconds a minute. Uh, if you go over 100,000 data points, maybe set minimal equals true. Um, and uh, you know, just kind of get a feel for how long uh, the pandas profiling will take. This is a nice report that will give you, you know, warnings on your data. Um, it will look uh, to help you decide how to do some data cleansing. Uh, you can look at the individual variables, uh, histogram, distribution, interactions uh, between them. Uh, so this can help to explore and create some of these plots that you'd be creating anyway, just to be able to look and explore the data. Okay, so, so that's it for this just initial exploration. So we want to use this data to do a couple different things. We want to determine a light off time of the catalytic converter. So let's go to that notebook now. Um, 
we're just going to uh, repeat some of these things with importing data. This one's going to be one where I just had the vehicle um, in the driveway and just turned on the vehicle on a cold day. And uh, we typical light off temperatures between 400 to 600 degrees Fahrenheit and normal operating temperature for a catalytic converter is between 750 to 1600 degrees. Now one of the issues is that uh, you know before this light off temperature the catalytic converter isn't really doing a lot. Uh, it isn't converting the pollutants um, into carbon dioxide um, and nitrogen. Um, and so you're emitting a lot during this initial startup period. So one of the things we want to ask, uh, see if we can determine from this data, is be able to determine how long do you emit uh, from this catalytic converter without the catalytic converter really working when you first turn on the vehicle. Uh, so let's go ahead and use this data. Uh, the, here's pandas, numpy, matplotlib. Okay, we're going to import uh, the auto warm-up, set the time index, print the data columns, just like we had done uh, before. Okay, um, let's see, PD is not defined. i got to run this one first. Okay, to import the package, and then you'll see the... Uh, I have quite a few more here. I selected that in the app, just more, um, you know, more data columns. And then let's just select some columns of interest. We're going to select the coolant temperature and then also the catalyst temperature, bank one, sensor one. And these are in degrees Fahrenheit, but your app can give you the option of using it in Celsius or other units as well. Okay, I'm going to drop not a number for those. And then here is vehicle speed as well. And I'll join the data. Okay, so I'm just going to take the ones that were non-zero just for those. And I'll join those three into uh, a new data frame called data. Okay, and I'll do an outer join on those. And here are the columns. Um, I'm just going to rename those just as I join them. Okay, and then I'll print the head. Okay, I'll fill in because some of them are going to have not a number for their other entries. I'll do the forward fill and backward fill. And get a length and describe my data set. Okay, so I have these three coolant, catalyst, and then speed. And uh, what I want to try to do is determine how long it takes this catalyst temperature to get up to about 500 degrees Fahrenheit, which I'll call the light off temperature. I also have my coolant uh, temperature as well, and then also my speed. So let's go ahead and plot this data, just the columns that we had selected. You can see right here, some of the data is bad. Um, you can see little spikes here in the coolant temperature, in the catalyst temperature. There's some noise or other type of signal. You also see speed. I probably didn't jump um, you know, right here up to 42 miles per hour and then back down on the next second. So I need to clean up the data just a little bit. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll remove some gross outliers, first of all. Uh, this one's going to be anything greater than 40 on the coolant temperature. I'm going to keep that. So I want to get rid of this spike right here. Okay. And then also in the speed, if I'm, you know, less than 20 miles an hour, I'm going to say get rid of that. So I want to get rid of this one and this one. I wasn't driving. I did do a little bit of driving here just to see how the catalyst temperature would increase, but uh, if I just clip that right here, I can get rid of these two spikes. So this is like a gross, these are gross outliers. Some ones that are kind of obvious, you can just eliminate them with a simple bound. Um, also, I wanna just look at the difference, how fast it changed. Maybe I can filter on that to get rid of these little spikes right here. So let's go ahead and just um, do D1, D2. Um, and create some new columns here. So that's the difference right here. Maybe I can filter on this one as well. So let's look, let's remove some of these other outliers. All right, so I'm going to um, look for periods of at least three cycles. Uh, just look at the data a little more closely. I'm going to um, 
eliminate some of those, the absolute value of the difference, okay, where that is less than five for D1 and less than 10 for D2. And uh, then also I wanna zero out the speed between 630, okay, about right here, and uh, 650. So I knew that that was zero. Uh, I did have a little bit of a speed. I moved the car just a little bit there, very slow. Uh, but these should be zero. So I'm just gonna filter that out as well. Just cleanse the data just a little bit more. So I'm gonna um, just look for values you know, between that time and set, um, set it equal to zero. And then let's go ahead and uh, show this now. I've removed 107 of the rows out of 13,000. So I had to remove some of these spikes. You can see some of the things that just didn't make sense uh, with the data that was collected. And you can see it's um, cleansed now in terms of uh, removing some of these outliers or noise. All right, let's go ahead and insert a feature. We need to tell it when the engine is on or off. That was not recorded by the device. Um, or I could have probably found one that correlated to it, but um, uh, there's my engine state is zero, and then I'm just going to pick out the time when I knew the engine was on and set that equal to one. Okay, so there's my next one. I'm adding a new uh, column now, and then uh, let's go ahead and just display the cleanse data, and we'll also save that as a new CSV file. Okay, so here's our coolant catalyst and speed, and here's the engine on off. Okay, let's determine the time to catalyst light off now. So we'll select just the engine on off and the catalyst and uh, we'll go between these two times. We'll just select uh, the data between those two times and let's look for where uh, we're greater than 500. Okay, so here's the light off. Okay, so I looked for any, you know, when I'm greater than 500 and that became a new column uh, called light off. Okay, so here's when my engine turned on and there's where the catalyst exceeded 500 degrees Fahrenheit. So with that, we can now find the engine start time. I'm just gonna locate that time right there where it turned on. Okay, and I'll also find the light off temperature. So where the light off started. I'll just record those two indices, the index of where those started. I'll take the difference between those two. And then it said I had 17.7 seconds to catalyst light off. So from where the vehicle was originally turned on to where that catalyst temperature exceeded 500 degrees Fahrenheit, it was about 17 seconds. Let's go ahead and also create an ARX model as well just to be able to see if we can predict this. Um, we have uh, our data, I'm gonna reduce it to about one to two seconds for per data point, and um, just get the time um, in minutes. There, I'm gonna import Gecko. This is a package you might need to pip install. And there's my time, my inputs, and my Y value. These are gonna be my catalyst and my coolant temperature as well. So I'm gonna try to use a digital twin to predict these. We'll generate a time series model and do system identification with this many coefficients and then plug in my data with the number of coefficients I want. Prediction is gonna be measurement, so it's gonna be a standard ARX identification. And then I'll plot the results. So let's see how well I can predict these temperatures now. Um, and you can see here the predicted are the dashed lines. So now I'm predicting the catalyst temperature and then also the coolant temperature as the car turns on or as I have a speed change. Okay, so it predicts them for both. Um, for both. Okay, so let's go on to the next one now, which is uh, visualization. This is going to be a different data set, but we want to plot it on some maps. Um, so here's a trip down to St. George, just about eight hours. 
And I'm going to read this zip file. I can read that directly into pandas. It'll unzip the file. And then I'm going to take about every hundredth data point because it's a lot of data. Okay, I'll set the time index and just print the columns. Okay, and again, I need to import my packages first. Okay, and then let's go ahead and just sample the data just to look at it. There's a lot of not a numbers here, so we'll need, just need to uh, fill down. Okay, so we're going to need to do some things just to clean it up a little bit. Okay, we'll fill down, fill back, and then we'll describe the data. Okay, so now I've filled it in. Instead of all these not a numbers here, I now have values. Um, then let's go ahead and just plot the data as well. So this is going to create uh, many subplots. And I'm just going to increase the size here, 10 by 30. They just show the data over the eight hours for each one individually on, a, on these individual trends. So you can see the RPM of the engine, the total distance traveled, um, et cetera. So a lot of data there. But this doesn't make a lot of sense. You see the latitude and longitude. Let's see if we can view these GPS points on a map. Yeah, I'm just going to use some code that from OpenStreetMap and some an example online of how to do this. Um, now you don't want to tax the server a lot. I, specifically in the code, I've just created it so it only downloads a few tiles. Okay, but it's an internet-based um, way of uh, internet service way of generating a map. Okay, I'll show some other ways of doing that as well. Here's a longitude and latitude. And look at the difference as well. Um, I'll get the image cluster that I need, and then I'll plot this. Okay, we'll plot the scale data on a map as well, and then we'll save this map GPS. Okay, I think I need to run this cell above it again, and run this cell. Okay, so you can see I, I downloaded three tiles from this OpenStreetMap. Um, just wanted to check this so I'm not overtaxing the server. But there you can see I put my map on top of this and it shows the route. But you can't really zoom in, you can't really interact with this map. So let's use Plotly Express. It's less complicated, fewer options than regular Plotly. Um, but let's go ahead and just start with this one. I'll import Plotly Express. If you want to get some example data, you can use this car share. Okay. Um, but I'm going to just use the data that I generated. So this line right here, if you don't have any data or don't want to use mine, just use this line to get some uh, data frame. But I'm going to use this data with la latitude and longitude. And then use a color of the plot as vehicle speed. And then the size is going to be vehicle altitude. Okay, and then I'll have a uh, color continuous scale. And then I'll update the figure layout with open street map um, style and then show the figure. Okay, so this is going to create an interactive plot and you can see as I zoom in on this, uh, you can see some city driving right here, you know where it went. If I put my mouse over this, I can see the longitude, latitude, the speed, um, and you can see the path of the vehicle. Now reduce it down to about a hundredth of the number of data points. So you could even increase that uh, if you'd like to. Uh, there should be about a hundred data points between these two points right here. You can see the traveling down south. Uh, that would be in the right hand lane. And then traveling back north again um, on the return trip about four hours in the right hand lane. Okay, so you can see on the map, um, you know, overall, just looking at it, you can see the vehicle speed here on the right. Uh, you can see the city driving, and then the size of it is going to be the altitude. So as you came in, you started dropping in elevation, you can see the size gets smaller, and the altitude decreases. 
All right, let's go ahead and just uh, scroll down, do something with Plotly as well. This one's a little bit more complicated, but there are more options, and it's a little easier to customize it. So I'm going to just generate the same plot that we had up here, but uh, do that with Plotly with a few more examples. Okay, so just kind of going through that fast, but you could go through this and look at some of the options. This one... Um, Similar thing, you can zoom in uh, and it gives you about the same result as before, um, but just with a few more options for customizing. Okay, the next one we're going to go through is this automotive regression, fuel efficiency versus speed. And I'm just going to go through this um, kind of quick. We import some Keras and also XGBoost regressors. Uh, we're going to reformat the time, plot, and visualize the data. Uh, we'll reformat the data as well. And then we'll show a heat map, create a pair plot. We'll scale, train the model, and show accuracy. I know I'm going through this really fast, um, but I'm also going to create a neural network here. Here's my XGBoost. Uh, no, this is one's my neural network. Um, okay, this is a gradient descent. Okay, stochastic gradient descent. Um, and I'm going to plot the learning history, save the model file. I'm going to then score my model, view the predictions. Okay, this is with XGBoost regression. And I'll display the extrapolations with one variable. Okay, just looking at a slice of it. And then the final thing I'll plot with the 4D color. So if you just run all on this one, you can download the notebook and run through this. It will train the model and show some of these predictions. And I'll just come to the course website. Okay, down here. This is the final result. It'll show you different things versus miles per gallon or fuel efficiency. And in this case, we wanted that to be the highest possible. Okay, liters per 100 kilometer, maybe the lowest possible, um, if you're in Europe, for example. Okay, so um, you want to look for things like how acceleration, speed, and RPM affect your fuel economy. And it gives some interesting insights. Some of them are not causal. It's just because of, you know, this is a manual transmission vehicle. Other vehicles are going to have other profiles on terms of peak efficiency versus speed or how you accelerate um, also the rpm of the engine i just encourage you to look into this one a little bit more and see if you can understand some of the um, cause and effect relationship within the variables using some of these neural network or xgboost models